So we're still working in the A5 poster PSD file. We have our subject, Smart Steve, and the background, Winter. And then what we're going to do is I want to point out, first of all, to make this as easy as I can, that there is only one document open in Photoshop here, the A5 poster. I'm going to hover over the thumbnail for the Smart Steve layer, which, as we now know, is a smart object. Now I'm going to double left click on that to open it up. Then Photoshop gives you this lovely little message that says, oh, after editing the contents, choose file save to commit the changes. Those changes will be reflected upon returning to the A5 poster. So we're going to edit whatever's inside of that smart object called Smart Steve. If we go and save those edits, they will then be reflected in this master file. So click OK. And then here it appears. Take a look. All the retouching work there is there. The layer mask is there. It isn't the original file. All we've done is opened up that smart object, that layer. If I click on the, uh, the Steve layer, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see these bits of red trim nice and clearly. I'll pick up our polygonal lasso tool, change the mode to new. And I'm going to create a very rough selection around those bits of the red trim. Just around here. Oops. See what I did? If you don't change the mode, you'll start creating a new selection and lose the last one. So if I hit the escape key, it takes me back and it puts the original selection in place. Then just make sure you change the mode to add to selection. See, I'm breaking my own rules here. And then whiz around that very roughly. Like this. You can even include a little bit of this one as well, like so. All just left clicks of the mouse. Just making sure I'm only including as little of the image as possible around where the red trim is. Um, this bit here. And this bit here. And then finally, these bits down here. Like so. So yes, I realize that it's not an accurate selection, but making sure that you've left clicked on the layer called Steve, go to select and choose color range. It's now going to focus on the region where we have selected those little bits of the red trim. It will activate this color sampling tool here. So this is Best way to think of this is it's a dialog box version of the magic wand we saw earlier. Take that tool, hover outside, and then click on one of the portions of red. Then it will start selecting that red shown in the preview in here. Then what you need to do is change the mode to add to and just drag through a little bit of the red in there and it'll keep adding it. Just drag through this bit here and it'll keep adding it and a bit in there as well and just drag through some of that red and a bit down here. And then you'll just go to the top and click in there. Now, if you want to see what that actually looks like on the image, rather than this teeny tiny preview, go to selection preview down at the bottom and change that to uh, black matte. Should we try black matte? Yes, we will. So everything that's selected in terms of the red will show up here in full color. We've got a little bit missing in here. So I might need to just make sure I've still got my add to selection mode and then just click in those regions like so. And if I'm happy that I've grabbed the majority of that red, the very final thing to do is go to the fuzziness slider just up here. That does the same kind of thing as tolerance. So the more I drag this and increase the number, the more of the red it will select and other colors similar to red. Now, I've just gone a little bit too far there, but that should just be enough. And notice that if I had not have created this initial selection, then Steve's face would be selected inside of here now and lots of other things. So it's just a good shortcut to getting what you want much, much quicker. Very basic selection and then using color range, target the color you want. With that done, well, I'm happy with that. I can click OK. And now I have a more detailed selection of that red area. I am going to click on the retouching work layer and then go to the adjustments 
and click on hue saturation that we used earlier. That will then use a layer mask of its own. And if I go to the hue in here, I can change just the color of the trim in there. And that works really well. So in here, like you can pick whichever trim color you wish to. I might go for this kind of jazzy little green number in here. Um, I'm happy with that. Um, and then this is the super confusing thing about this. This is not a separate file, but you have to go to the file menu and do everything you would normally do to save a separate file, but it's not. I just wish there was an option under layer where it said something like save layer changes, but it's not super confusing, but just go to file and choose save and you save the contents of this opened layer. You can go back and click on the tab to the other file and take a look at uh, super sporting green trim in there is now shown in this file. So that's how you can edit smart object. And that's the benefits of using a smart object to protect the content, but also to make those kind of edits. I'll go back to the original, click on the X to close that down. And I'll finish by going to file and choosing save inside of here. So smart objects can be incredibly powerful. Um, and um, that's how you create a montage.